Hi, it's uh, Peter here from Mini Model Vein Studios. This is uh, my first uh, multi-camera kind of thing. I need to keep remembering to look at you here and not down here, which is you know, an old problem I'm sure that a few of us have had in the past. Uh, we are today going to be looking at doing some uh, decals. These I've started already, uh, but I've had a few questions on um, on various forums and Facebook pages and, and things of uh, what the best um, best way about getting a decal down and mm. uh, not getting silvering and um, what the, what's the best way of, of getting it to stick and what's the process, what's the workflow. So uh, we're going to be working with this. This is the uh, 1942 Ford four-door. Um, that way. Sorry about the light. We're going to work on the uh, the setup in the studio as uh, as, as we go along. Uh, this is the uh, the Tamiya uh, Army Staff Car um, from 1942. It is actually a Ford four-door um, sedan. Um, this is the military variant of it, but um, obviously there's some issue with Tamiya and rights of calling their things actually what they are. So they're not allowed to call this a Ford because they didn't pay Ford any money for it. Anyway, so what we've done here, we've um, let me switch the camera. Right, so here we are. Um, so we've we've uh, sprayed the uh, the outside with olive drab. That is this one, the Tamiya XF62. Um, XF62. Where's the camera? <laughs> you can tell this is my first time. Okay, XF62. Uh, olive drab. And then sprayed it with Future. We've glossed the entire thing with uh, with, with Future. That's um, this has got a million names around the world. I think it's now called Johnson's Clear or something, but it's floor finish. Um, it's an it's an acrylic gloss floor finish, and it smells um, it's, it smells like pear drops. I've actually used it on our floor, and it works well on the floor as well as on bottles. So uh, the, the kind of good thing there. So what we do first is spray the whole thing in the colour we want it, then spray it with Future or any other gloss to protect it, and and give it a nice smooth uh, coat for it to um, for the for the decal to to stick to, and uh, then we start working on the decal. First things first, though, uh, we need to put some other chemicals on. Uh, this is uh, Microset from um, Microscale Industries. We use Microset first, then we put the decal on, and then we use Microsol as many times as we need to to slap over it to burn away the carrier film, so we don't get that ugly little silvery line around the outside. Uh, so first things first, let's. The um, show you on the box. Today we're going to do this number here, and of course it's you can't see it, it's on the back, uh, but the star that goes on the back, uh, which is this star down here. Uh, so let's paint on some microset. If you get confused and don't know which way around, you want to, it's meant to do it. Uh, they do handily tell you on the on the back here. Brush microset on the model when the decal is to be applied, and then dip in uh, water, slide off packing paper and the model. Carefully brush more microset on top of the decal. Great. So that's the way we do it. Now, sharp, exacto blade. We're going to do the do this with these first. Cut this out. Right, so here we have uh, the USA one three four seven zero one. Let's put it back. 
here and you see that's probably better in this. No, you can't, it's just as bright. Ah, anyway, you'll see it in a minute. Need some water in here though. So just standard tap water. I'll put it in there. Drinking water bottle. It's fine if it's cold, it's better if it's slightly warm. Uh, I do have uh, a USB. for Christmas, it's great fun. It's a USB BB-8, uh, cup warmer, I've got no spare USB sockets to plug it into, um, and then you'd sit your pot on here, warm up the water, and then you've got uh, room temperature. Uh, water, uh, rather than cold, it's a bit chilly in here, I've switched the fan off, the uh, the heater off, um, so you're not getting any background noise, normally work with the heater on, uh, it sounds like this. We don't want that. I'll warm up with coffee instead. So, not those. Okay, now. Already got them. So let's hold these in. In there. Now this takes 10 seconds, 20 seconds, a little while. So, uh, talk amongst yourselves, I'll try and talk to you, it's, uh, it's strangely not very easy chatting away uh, on the camera while you're doing this, but it's a, it's a good skill to learn. Okay, let's see how we're doing on that. Mm. So kitchen roll. Standard leftover Christmas paper kitchen roll. Let's get rid of that uh, micro set off there. Let's see. Is this moving? You can see the, you might be able to see a little black fleck from uh, from the part number, from the uh, decal number. So those are floating around. Get those out of the way, but at least you know that it's working. And this kit I've had in my stash for for about well for less than ten years. Uh, I started it. Three, four houses ago, we move a lot. Oh, off you go. And I'd started it and never really got very far. I think when I started it, my airbrushing techniques weren't brilliant. My, I didn't have a setup, a permanent space to work. Starting to lift. Come on. This has been a cheeky little so and so. You can see some of it's moving. You can't see it. This is probably the most boring thing you've ever watched. Is it all white under these lights under here, isn't it? Wait until I show you one day how to uh, how to make your own. Now that is an exciting process. I'll dab off some excess water. Let's see. All this, yes. Right, let's check the box. Where do we want to smack dab in the middle of that above the line? So 
that right. So, as it says on the directions, brush on some more uh, microset, blue on. Can you see that? Hopefully, you can see it alright. Now, this stuff dries well. Now, let's leave it alone. Let's leave that right alone. Let's get some more just on here, make sure we're happy with that. And rinse and repeat. So here we go with this one. And you can see I've got tweezers, I've got brushes. You don't have to have tweezers. You don't. Have, I mean, you do. You can use a knife if you, or you can use scissors. I mean, I wouldn't on small things. I'd rather use a sharp knife. Um, but don't think that if you don't have exactly the same tools as, as we've got here, that you can't achieve exactly the same thing. Right. Let's dump that. And we wait. Um, and as we're waiting, we can talk about uh, let's talk about the colour scheme on this. Um, so to me, his instructions uh, can, can tell you the whole thing is olive drab, and the inside is um, I say it's buff. It's either buff or deck tan. Basically, it's cream. One's slightly darker than the other. Um, so on the inside there, I've sprayed the whole thing and masked the outside, made a little mistake, cleaned it up. Um, not that big a deal. It looks really glossy at the minute. The whole thing's going to get sprayed, dulled down with uh, with matte spray. Uh, the driver, uh, still a bit more work to do on his face. Um, but he's basically the same colours. Um, his jacket is a mixture of XF62 uh, and XF5, just a, a more green green, and then mix those together, uh, one part of each. Uh, so he's not exactly the same colour as the car, uh, but he's got that kind of um, arminess about him. And the peak of his cap is actually the same leather colour as the seats. And I've used uh, a few washes just to darken things up make a few uh, details um, shade down so I can highlight either with some dry brushing or um, some, some blending or whatever I decide to do. Yeah. And uh, good old Citadel paints still got, I found in a pot, my old Devlin mud. Devlin mud. Look at that. Don't we miss the production of devil and mud? If only all washes were as good as old-fashioned devil and mud. Right, let's see. Is this ready to lift yet? Nearly there. The stars, the three stars that are already on there, they came off so easily. Really quickly, really easily. Come on, off we go. So, as I say, this is the first in what I hope to be uh, many uh, videos on tips. Tips, tricks, tutorials, mm -hmm. and do them 
recorded live uh, with an aim to at some point in the near future start doing it actually live so you guys can tune in and send me messages, ask me questions, I can answer them uh, directly uh, from the screen. I want to get this set up a little bit better and I want to get my internet connection here in the studio a little bit faster than 5 meg um, up, <laughs> upstream. Been a little piggy this one. I'm just doing a bit of a dipstick with it. Okay. Mm. Same deal as before. Wick away some of that. Make sure that's positioned ideally, identically to the one on that side. Not quite, is it? So let's put a little bit of this stuff. Now, you might notice whether it focuses or not, but you might notice there's a little discoloration um, from the solvent from the microset on the paint. Don't worry about that. That will go when it's dry completely. Disappear when it's dry. So now we leave those to dry. Should we do the back? Let's do the back. We get a star smack bang in the middle of, um, of the boot. Trunk, this is an American car, it's a trunk, it's not a boot. Just put a lid on it. I guarantee they will knock it over if I don't. Okay. Prep the area there. Now, a lot of people on the same uh, Facebook thread, seasoned um, builders, seasoned modelers, they uh, have been advocating not to bother with gloss. Seems a bit lazy to me. They say you don't need it, it's not a definitely you have to have it. Well, while that might be true, um, if they are happy with the, uh, the smoothness of, of their airbrushing uh, and the, the amount of sanding with the exact perfect smoothness that they've got there and that there's not going to be any air um, or part bubbles or anything underneath to, to lay the, the, uh, the decal on after, then, uh, then good for them. I don't trust, firstly I don't trust anything that I do. I don't trust um, anything that the manufacturers do, and I don't trust the paints or the chemicals or the anything. I just want to make sure every single time I do it that I'm actually paying attention to what I'm doing. Um, so gloss before, put it on, use the chemicals, mm -hmm. gloss after, and uh, and hope to God that it actually works. Um, maybe a little bit harsh to say I don't trust it. I certainly don't trust my airbrushing um, to, to know that it's perfectly smooth to lay this down without any bubbles underneath or any flecks or particles or anything like that. Oh, well, that's doing. You see some of the. Uh, I've started weathering the, uh, the leather on here with washes. Might even put a few cigarette holes in it. That was my favourite thing in my first car. 20 years ago, 25 years ago, um, I had a lovely, lovely little Metro, uh, um, an MG Metro. Um, and of 
course at university I was designated driver all the time and uh, wouldn't you know it one day some lovely lovely friend of a friend of a friend that we were driving to a party somewhere decided to to light up in, in the back of my car so no no smoking in my car thank you so he put it out in the seat he didn't get a lift on It might just be that this water is just that little bit colder than it was yesterday when I did the other three. Now, the trick with these stars is you've got to get them pointed in the right direction, otherwise they look so. None of this that'll do business. It's got to be perfect, doesn't it? As you can tell, because that one doesn't quite line up, because it seems to have shifted since I stuck it down. It'll do. And now we leave it. Okay, so the front ones look like they have started to uh, to dry, but can we get a close up on these? Okay, let's go close on this camera. Okay, you can see actually that there is a little bit of silvering already happening. It's not quite conforming to the uh, the curve that it's meant to be sitting on. I'm not going to use my clumsy clumsy fingers. We're going to use the red one, Microsol. I'm going to drown this thing. And yes, I've just washed it in dirty water and we use the same brush. It'll be fine. So over the course of the next couple of days, I will be just dabbing on more and more and more of the micro sol. It will have stuck down by that point. What that does, it softens the... Uh, between them... It, they soften it and they allow it to conform to, to silly shapes, like curves, like bumps. Um, I have back here in the project box. Probably going to be peeling these off. I'm not happy with them. Uh, so this is the uh, the X wing uh, that I'm working on for an out-of-the-box model build um, and here there and there are some instrument panels which have conformed to um, they've, they've conformed to the bumps I should probably scrape the bumps away um, but I'm not happy with them they look like stickers they, even uh, Bandai make some of the best kits at the minute, and, uh, and sometimes they get certain things wrong. I mean, this this decal is too big for, for that. 
that needs trimming away. I'm probably going to peel this away, scrape it out, paint in the, uh, the things, and then do some uh, some OSL to make it look like there's some green um, uh, green displays flashing on uh, on Red Five. Uh, Luke, who's, uh, who's driving this thing. But we'll get there. Get that there for now. So, what have we got left on here? Number plates and these black things. I don't know what those black things are. Use 5, 6 and 7 for the civilian versions. So I don't need those. Buy the number plate, six and seven. Go to this million car. So we are done for the decals on this. So the next step is just to keep plowing on this until all that carrier film uh, disappears. I'm going to do the same now to the three that I did yesterday. It's not the most exciting of processes. Why? You should always have something else on the go at the same time. chance to, uh, to actually set. So we can put this aside for now. So as I said, always have something else to work on. I think what I'm going to work on, while I'm waiting for that, a little bonus, is a bit of weathering. I'm done with this, so we can throw that in the, uh, in the waste water. Where have we got them? Somewhere down here, I've got <laughs> I have the clear parts. So here are this is the windscreen. Uh, obviously, as a windscreen, it has windscreen wipers, which we'll paint in very carefully. I'll dip this in uh, in future. Allow it to roll off completely, so it has a little bit of a little bit of a thing, a blot. But that's okay because what we're going to do. These windscreen wipers look like they've got pivot points here and and here. So they go an arc goes that way, and an arc goes that way. Yes, right, okay, so here we have a look at the box art. You don't always need to go to the internet for the complete reference of everything you can see in the uh, middle picture there, um, but the pivots are in, in the middle of the screen, which means that they will do that. So we're going to make some masks. Um, and draw those on, and, uh, and we can... Uh, do some uh, some weathering on directly on, uh, on the windscreen. I'll try and stop thumbing and annoying as well. Somewhere, five foot down. So many bits. Where is my tape? I'm using it. Don't you hate it when you lose your tape? There. <laughs> yeah, you can see it all along. Okay, so we want this to be low tack. Let's move this one out of the way. Safety in box. This is already good low tack uh, tape. Remind me, I've left it there. Okay. 
good way of getting low, even if it, you don't have low tax up, you stick it down, take it up, stick it down again on, on your subject, and uh, it's already less sticky, which obviously on most things you don't want that. But on marketing tape, you absolutely do. You don't want to pull off any tape or any other substance you stuck on here. Hold it by. Now, if I was really, really um, organized, I'd have a pencil right next to this. do the same for this one, so we can draw the same length of it go back there. You see what I'm doing? Draws my head in the way. That's what we want to keep. So with a sharp blade, Always good to start with the sharpest blade you have for so doing any work like this. I say that because I never do. I always wish that I had done. Now, at some point, I'm going to be working uh, with vinyl and cutting using uh, a vinyl cutting uh, machine and trying to make little masks like this. Because um, vinyl works actually usually better than paper. It sticks down, it doesn't bleed around the edges as much. Um, usually, if you do it correct, you don't, it doesn't do it at all. I mean that's the uh, the art of everything, isn't it? If you do it right, it doesn't it doesn't go wrong. Oh, look at that! We have ourselves a little mask.
Now, as I said, I've owned a few old cars. I also had uh, a 1960s Morris Minor at some point, and I can tell you that the uh, the wiper blades on that they didn't work. They didn't do that. They did that um, the regular way they'd expect. But the speed was inconsistent. One would move up, and then the other would catch up with it. Uh, they wouldn't do exactly the same pattern on, on each side of the windscreen. So that I have not quite got exactly the same pattern. There you go, let's try to get the reflection in there. So I haven't quite going, uh, got the same pattern. Um, it doesn't really matter, I don't think. River counters will disagree with me, and river counters uh, can go and do one. Mm. Here, I don't need those. Do I need, do I need that? Yeah, let's have that. Let's clear a little bit of space on here now, because we're going to get the airbrush uh, up and running. And put that somewhere safe. Move this out of the way, you don't want that getting damaged. Just like that. I don't want it getting damaged. So what colour are we going to do for dust? And we need to do something really, really um, low. Now, kicking the airbrush uh, and the compressor now. Make a bit of old cardboard. Um, there you go. That's what old cereal boxes are for. for spraying on. I do have a spray booth um, back there, one little portable spray booth, uh, but I haven't got it quite set up for anywhere to, to use it at the minute. Um, so there you go. You've heard my compressor uh, kick in and kick out. Now, what colours do I want to use? I think. If you know your colour, if you know your paint backwards, then great. I don't. Ooh, this. Okay. Let me just adjust the. Um, brightness on uh, on this camera. Okay. Let me zoom in a bit for you as well, which we can do. There we go. I'm working on here, can you see that? dust, I don't really want a dark mud. I 
I wonder if we mix that. That's nice, I like that. Maybe mix that with the dead flesh. Right, we'll do that. We mix this right into. Um, uh, we won't. We can't do that easily. We do this in a little ketchup um, thing. These are great. Next time you go to McDonald's, pick up um, a ketchup thing. It's great for mixing. Don't need a lot. I mean, I don't want to waste the paint for this. everything today. No, I didn't take it out. There it is. Oh, this might look absolutely pants. I mean, just a regular brush. A nothing brush. I don't care too much about This might even seem like a lot of work for the, the lack of, well, the, the very little that we're going to use this for. So here we have uh, the magical airbrush foam prover. the magical blowback technique of mixing in the thing and get uh, the thing hold the end of the nozzle and then just let it mix in the cup. That's it, right here we go. Dried up. Might have been a bit too thin. Let's look on here. something else as well, while well, that's drying. And I can already see, can you see, I need to focus on this. Hopefully that can focus around there. You can see that it's, it's matted up the, the sprue there, where the light's shining through it. That might be enough. I'm not going to go too far with it. I'm going to leave that as is. I've changed my mind. I'm not doing any more on it now. So wait for that to dry.
and then when that's ready, we peel that off. And, uh, and when we when we fit that into the, uh, the shell of the car, right, look at that! You can see where it's looks like it's discoloured the uh, the roof. It hasn't. It's only temporary. It's only a, an over the top film. That's where it's burning away. That. Uh, the carrier film, which is quite clear still on the back, on the back star, and definitely it's it's working its magic to conform the uh, the uh, the numbers on the front. It'll blend in as well a lot better once we spray the whole thing again with. Um, the future to, uh, to protect it, to gloss it. I just want to make sure these are setting down just right. So you can always peel off the back without causing any distress to the front. Okay, so. I'm happy with that. Yeah, I can see that, you can't see that. Let's see where it's. Where have we got some in the now? There we go. Right. So you can see. that it's still slightly see through. When we peel that off, when it's dry, I'll get some pictures up and stick it at the end of the video. Um, when it's dry, it will uh, we'll see right through that, and then that will sit inside the car. And now like that. I don't want to put the glass in. I don't want to put any of the glass in just yet. Not until the decals are down, everything is happy, I've glossed it, and then I can matte the body. So I don't want to spray any more matte on the glass. Because why would you why would you want to put matte on the glass? Right. Not putting any ketchup in this, that's done. That's going to be in. Um Fold that over. I'm sure, in a family the size of mine, we will get through some more boxes of cereal next time. By the next time, I need to do any airbrushing. But that, I guess, for now, is is that. I mean, we, we can't sit here for hours and hours waiting for for literally um, uh, Microsol and Microstep to uh, to dry. What is? No, me neither. Uh, time for me to go and make some lunch. I will leave you to imagine how amazing this is going to look. And uh, with that imagination, I'll stick some photos on when, uh, when I've edited this together. And you can see uh, the uh, the actual end result. Uh, so, uh, that's it then for, for now. Um, please post comments. Uh, tell me what you want to see me do. Um, basic techniques, advanced techniques, um, it doesn't have to be this model, we can work on, uh, on, on figures, we can work on airplanes, spaceships, um, aliens, you know, space marines, you know, 40k stuff, big things, I mean I'm working on, you can't see how, but there's a, I've got the zombie, I've got a commission uh, build there, that's um, about to go into some weathering, mm -hmm. um, and, and hair, um, and I've got a Dracula, the same kind of size, big, two and a half foot bust of, um, uh, of Gary Oldman's uh, monster version of Dracula, uh, which needs uh, needs cracking on with. But if there are any techniques you want to see, stick them in the comment below um, or Twitter.
tweet at me, I'm at Mini Model Paint. Um, I'm on Facebook, uh, Facebook forward slash Mini Model Paint. Uh, I'm going to clean my airbrush and uh, I'll see you next time. Adios.